Curiously Catholic is part of the Evangelion Apostle, and our mission is like evangelization. It's how do we bring this 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 beauty, this truth that we've been given to people that don't even recognize it. And um, yes. so I, one of the things that you talked about in your Theology of the Body 1, TOB 1 course, that's what it's called, right? It's like yeah. bringing that head knowledge, the heart knowledge to head knowledge and just combining them. But like one line that you talked about and it just cut me through all the way and it's like because it's because i knew the truth of it but i don't know how to articulate it to someone so like so how do we articulate the truth of the bible um to those that don't believe and i'm thinking specifically of that line uh have you not read that the one that made them um from the beginning made the male and female and then there's also i think maybe you talked about this in your podcast as well is um in the beginning it was not so um and because that's a that's a that's a a really big one like the way that you talked about in your podcast is like in this culture today it's like in the beginning it was not so and you know we were created in a specific way in for a specific purpose and like theology of the body you know that's what people sometimes think theology body is just about but that that is a big part of it but from there you go outwards to even deeper truth so like how do we how do we articulate these these things that are quite um, hard to take nowadays? How do we articulate it in a way that is sharing the truth with law? Yes, let, let me say a few words about those scriptures that you quoted and, and why they're important. And then I'll link it back to the second question about proclaiming these truths with love in a, in a world that has rejected them. So the, the context for those scriptures is the Pharisees come to Jesus to question him about marriage. And they specifically want to know, is it okay for a man to divorce to divorce his wife? And Jesus says, haven't you read that in the beginning, God made them male and female and called the two to become one flesh? What God has joined, we cannot separate. And that reference to the beginning is absolutely critical. Jesus is saying, look, there was an original plan and and you've fallen from it. And, and I'm here, I've come into the world to restore creation to the purity of its origins, right? And they, they're like, well, Moses allowed us to divorce our wives. And Jesus says, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives because of the hardness of your heart. And then Jesus says, but from the beginning, it was not so, right? So what's the beginning? The beginning is the blueprint of our humanity. The beginning is the original plan for our humanity. And in the beginning, we read that the man and his wife were both naked and felt no shame. Right? Why were they naked without shame? They were naked without shame because they were filled to overflowing with God's love. They experienced sexual desire in the beginning as nothing but the desire to love in the image of God because they were filled with this love of God. That's what was flowing out of their bodies, right? They saw in their bodies, right? A man's body doesn't make sense by itself. A woman's body doesn't make sense by itself. But seen in light of each other, they discovered the call to holy communion in the image of God, right? God himself is an eternal exchange of life-giving love and communion. God is not sexual. That's not the point. But our sexuality is a reflection, or it's meant to be, a reflection of that eternal life-giving communion of God. They understood this in the beginning. They were filled with this love and this vision in the beginning. But here's the tragedy of original sin. They ran out of wine. What does that mean? Wine is a symbol in the Bible of God's love poured out, right? When the man and the woman ran out of wine, they no longer had that divine love in them to share with one another. And now they no longer see the divine plan revealed through their naked bodies. Rather, they're looking at their naked bodies as objects to use for their own pleasure because they've run out of wine. That's why they hide. That's why they cover their bodies, right? We cover our bodies in a fallen world 
not because they're bad. We cover our bodies in a fallen world because they're so good, but we've lost a real ability to honor them and to respect the goodness of the body. We treat the body as a thing for our own selfish pleasure. But here's the good news of the gospel. Dom, where does Jesus perform his first miracle? Wedding at Cana. At a wedding. And what happened to that married couple? They ran out of? Wine. They ran out of wine. This is a symbol of the original sin. And Dom, what does Jesus do for this married couple who ran out of wine? Does he scold them or shame them for running out of wine? What does he do? He gives them better wine. He gives them better wine. And better wine in super abundance. Do you know how much wine Jesus brought to this party? About 750 bottles if you do the math. 125 gallons if you do the math. This is a lot of wine. Where where do we get the idea that Jesus is a party pooper? The goal, mm. the goal of the Christian life from this perspective is to get totally wasted on God's wine. Get wasted mm. on God's wine. What did they accuse the apostles of on Pentecost Day when God's love fell upon them? Everybody thought they were drunk. Yeah. They were drunk on God's wine. See, here's, here's how I want to link this now back to your question about how do we bring this to people? We have to witness to the world that there is a banquet that corresponds to our hunger, that there is a wine that corresponds to our thirst, right? We have to get people in touch with their deepest hunger and thirst. Christianity is for hungry people. It's not just about following a bunch of rules, right? Think about the parable of the prodigal son. What caused him to leave his father's house? He was hungry, and he didn't think his father was going to feed him. So he went out to see what he could get elsewhere. What brought him back to the father's house? He had exhausted everything the world had to offer, and he was hungrier than ever. And he said, I know my father will feed me. And he went back, and his father threw this grand celebration. He slaughtered the fatted calf, right? But what was the older brother doing? The older brother, mind you, who had been following all the rules, but the older brother refused to go into the celebration, right? How tragic. The celebration is the symbol of heaven. How tragic that this guy who thought being part of the father's family was just about following rules, he never entered the celebration. See, the celebration, the Christian celebration is for hungry people. It's for people who know and feel how hungry they really are. And they realize Christianity is an invitation to a wedding feast. What does Jesus say about evangelization? He says, go out into the main streets and tell everyone they're going to hell. No, that's <laughs> not what he says. He says, go out into the main streets and invite everyone to the wedding feast. This is our faith. It is a banquet. It is an invitation to the satisfaction of the deepest yearnings and desires of our hearts. That's Christianity. Anything else, if we're not proclaiming that, we're not proclaiming the Catholic faith. We're proclaiming some moralism or legalism or rigorism, uh, all of which has been condemned by the church as heresy. We have to get people in touch with their hunger and we have to witness to the fact that there is a banquet that corresponds to that hunger. And that's why the theology of the body changed my life, because that's what it's all about.